So let's get you awake tonight. So I know I promised in my last vlog that I was going to come back with something more upbeat and positive and true to form. I almost didn't. Honestly, my first thought was going to spend five good minutes talking about that whole Ray Rice thing because as a journalist, a sports fan, and a male in that order, there's a lot about that whole thing that rubs me the wrong way. But you know what? After listening to my fellow media cohorts go on and on about it for about ten hours today, yeah, I really needed a break too. So I started working on revisions for my novel Terminal Offender last Saturday and I realized about two pages in that, oh, I got a whole hell of a lot of work ahead of me. Now this is hardly a surprise, mind you. I mean, when I sent it off to my alpha readers, I warned them as such and I knew it when I took my summer sabbatical. This just happens to be one of those times where reality exceeds expectations by just more than a little somewhat. And you know what? That's really a good thing because when it comes down to it, first drafts are inherently designed to be terrible. Now, one of my university writing professors had two great analogies for what the first draft actually represents. First, think of it like you're a combination archaeologist and neurosurgeon. Let's not kid ourselves. Buckaroo Banzai is and always will be the perfect representation of this, but still, just go with me on it. Now, you have something in your head, and it might be a benefit to others, whether it's a factual or fictional idea. And, of course, you have to get it out. So the whole process starts with you digging it out of the creative earth in your mind so you have some rough idea of what it's ultimately going to be. And then from there, all you really need to do is just scrape away the unnecessary bits until you've got something that is good enough that you can show it to other people. And the second and much more simplistic analogy is really that a first draft is nothing more than you're hocking spitballs at a wall in the hope that when you're done, you'll look at one point and go, hmm. That looks vaguely like a llama. Full disclosure, my son, who turns three and a half, had floored me during our last get-together with this little hand llama thing of his, and it, I couldn't pass it up. Now, writers, like all other creative people, tend to want to get their stories absolutely perfect from the moment they sit down at the keyboard and type out the first line. Now, me, being the myopic perfectionist that I am, I'm no different, but unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. Now, I have been reading books since I was two and a half. I've been writing stories since I was in the second grade. I have never, ever heard of any writer anywhere who's managed to get their first draft published as soon as they turn it in. Now, if you do and you can verify them, by all means, drop me a note down in the comments and I will gladly make a culpa of that last statement. Now, yes, it does depend entirely on what you're writing, but even as a journalist who's had more than 500 articles published, even I've had to go back on stories that I've written and make little changes before they go to print. Seriously, it's part of the deal, and it's okay. So if you're struggling trying to figure out how you're possibly going to repeat what you managed to do in your first draft, just relax and take a deep breath. Because you don't have to. All you have to do is take what you've written and just start fine-tuning it. And you ask any published author, and I'm willing to bet good money they'll tell you, that's where the fun is. So don't worry. Get some sleep. And sweet dreams when you get there.